All right, time for this review. Ring, ring, ring. Who's this? Hello? Hello, James. Oh, not again. Come on, you called me yesterday during my Scream ranking review, and now I'm reviewing Scream 5. It, Ooh, I want to yeah? listen. That interests you? Perfect. I'm going to leave you on the line so you can listen to the review. Oh, not again. You know, I have a funny feeling that I'm starting to think that this dude that calls doesn't like being left on hold. Okay, I'm going to go lock all the doors. What's going on everyone, James here with another real review and I'm so excited to finally give you my spoiler free thoughts on Scream 5 or as some might know it, Scream. Now this film is, ah, uh, it's something special you guys. There's a lot to take away from this. We're going to dive into a ton of things here, but again, no spoilers. So this is a safe review and I can't wait to dive into everything. Before we do that though, let's kind of set the stage and talk about some of the new players that are coming to the table on this film. Scream is directed by Matt Bettinelli, Olpin, and Tyler Gillett, who actually worked on Ready or Not, and the film is starring some legacy characters, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and some newcomers like Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera. There are so many more names that we'll talk about, I promise, but let me tell you guys, this cast is very, very good. Now, the film itself, okay, how do I talk about this without spoiling the plot? Um, I'm gonna read off the paper. 25 years later, after the original series of murders in Westboro, a new killer emerges, and Sidney Prescott must return to uncover the truth. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. Now, like I said, there's a lot to love here, and maybe a couple of things that didn't work for me, but before we get into all of that, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I love talking about movies, so if you do too, go ahead and hit the big red button down below, subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, hit the thumbs up button if you are a fan of the Scream franchise, and get loud in the comments when you see this movie, and let me know, did it live up to your expectations? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And where does it rank for you in the Scream franchise? At the end of this review, I'm going to tell you guys exactly where it ranks, because I know where it is on my list. Alrighty y'all, so you know what, let's get into the positives and let's start right at the top with something that I thought this film couldn't pull off, but it did. While Scream 5 honors the past, there's also something fresh about this movie, and that's due in large part to the cast itself. I was almost afraid that it wouldn't really provide a very unique angle, the trailer sold me, I didn't watch anything else after that, but I was kind of nervous that maybe it wouldn't feel as fresh and would rely a lot on the older films but let me tell you this new generation i'm sold the absolute scene stealer for me and my favorite performance in the film is jenna ortega as tara she brings a level of emotion that i felt compelled by especially in that first act there's something so special about her acting ability where she just commands my attention and she's actually really good at selling uh, the terrified nature of her character because she's stuck in the middle where she's trying to basically make it on her own she has some friends that maybe she doesn't trust all the way and she's also missing that familial relationship with her sister so this character is complex the arc is definitely something to pay attention to and i thought that jenna ortega was a perfect fit for this character and then you have melissa barrera who plays sam tara's sister and has some of those more melodramatic lines of dialogue but for me it worked now melissa barrera sold me in in the heights i loved what she did alongside everyone in that cast especially anthony ramos but she has this innate ability to just have chemistry with everyone i just was sold on a lot of those moments where she's of course fighting Ghostface or she's fighting someone else and it really made me just a bigger fan of Melissa Barrera after this because it showed that she is versatile in her acting ability. Now there are some moments and we'll talk about it that didn't work all the way for me but I will tell you that Melissa Barrera is one of those actors in this movie that Mm, gets the job done. But as much as I love both of those performances, the rest of the new faces introduced in this franchise really made me smile. Right at the top is Jasmine Savoy Brown. She plays Mindy, sister to Mason Gooding's character, Chad. Both of them have great moments, and what I actually love is that this movie makes way for all of these characters to have a character moment, and it just works. They eat up all of the scenes, and I just love the Gen Z approach here, and I could kind of relate to it, even though I'm a millennial, I could kind of see where they were going and understand the dialogue and the conversations among them, but outside of those two, you have Jack Quaid, who you know from the boys, of course, he plays Richie, which is Sam's boyfriend, in this movie and Richie is such a funny character but it's Jack Quaid in his line delivery that I'm like dude nails it and even Mickey Madsen, Sonia Amar, and Dylan Minnette do a really good job at just playing their part 
to almost perfection. Each of them have very unique qualities as a character, and I think these actors do a good job at getting within character and delivering that on screen. There's one scene in particular where they're all in a living room together and each of their qualities are put on full display. It is just so fun to witness and never was a bored with any of these moments that didn't involve them running away from Ghostface. There's also something to be said about the dynamics that this movie plays with, and the most notable for me is the sisterly character arc between Sam and Tara. Now I know we just talked about it a little bit, but there's this one conversation in the first act, probably I think within the first 30 minutes of the movie, where they're having a conversation together in a hospital, and it is just one of my favorite scenes of the movie because it sort of encapsulates all of their emotions for one another in in that moment and then of course their acting is put on full display i'm believing all the crying i'm believing everything and it really just works because it sets the foundation for what i believe to be the best relationship dynamic in the entire film which is between the two sisters and the second dynamic that really worked for me is how the film tackled our legacy characters now it goes without saying a lot of fans are going to want to see nev campbell courtney cox and david arquette on the big screen this is the big three they've been been with us from the jump but the film kind of allows them to have their shine without taking away from the new generation and that's one thing I really loved about the direction and the writing in this film. We never get oversaturated with too much screen time for these characters but we get enough of Sid, Gale, and Dewey to really whet our appetites. Now is that to say they don't get emotional or some action-packed moments? Absolutely not. Some of my favorite moments even between Sid and Gale happen in this film and I love the fact that they kind of explore these characters on a deeper more mature level too because we don't necessarily just, I don't know, get them going in and trying to go and fight Ghostface. They essentially have real world things they need to tackle and the movie does a really good job at exploring that avenue through Dewey because Dewey is a kind-hearted man but he's going through some things and you start to learn a little bit more about his character because they're peeling back the layers and taking that time to effectively tell the audience here's where our legacy characters are today and yeah they got some years on them but still i love this big three they have some amazing kick butt moments and some of the scenes with them all are some of the best in the franchise now from a technical standpoint because like i said i love the cast some of our new faces and some amazing scene stealing performances from the likes of jenna ortega and everyone else but there's something here technically that needs to be noted and that starts with the direction matt bettinelli olpin and tyler gillett just understand this genre they get it guys they know how to make scenes feel menacing when i watched ready or not while it wasn't like a five out of five for me i still thought man they build tension in very unique ways and it's effective they subvert expectations there's some jump scares here in this movie that made me literally smack my leg and say my gosh why did you do that to my heart but the way that they direct the action the way they direct some of these more claustrophobic feeling moments and all of the kill scenes man they play Play out so gruesomely and it did make me squirm in my seat sometimes. And then there's the way that the movie looks and feels and that's due in large part to the cinematography. Cinematographer Brett Juckiewicz who worked on Ready or Not and Stranger Things also sorry if I butchered that last name he does a very good job in this movie. I love the way that he films Ghostface. There's one scene in particular in another hospital setting where Ghostface looks menacing towering over the audience and the way that Ghostface is filmed here is different from all of the other films. If anything, I love the way that he's filmed here the most. And I think it's because of how sinister Ghostface is in this movie. There's little tilts of the camera. There's ways that they get on the ground up to Ghostface. It's not always straight on. And I think also, outside of Ghostface, there are some amazing moments where it just makes this experience so fun when we get up I don't know, a, a camera zoom out of the home and then the camera tilts a little bit and you start to go on a ride and it makes it feel different and unique and that's what helps separate this movie from the originals. And I also like the score by Brian Tyler who is no stranger to composing music for big movies and I was a little bit worried in this department because I didn't know how the score and the soundtrack would blend together well in the first two Scream movies actually. I love the way that they were able to bring in that rock influence and here I didn't really see that too often but in a good way because they used more modern songs they used modern 
takes on what music sounds like today versus that 90s feel, early 2000s feel. So it sounds to me like they understood that this, again, is for a new generation, and it worked. Now you're probably asking, well, what about the twist? And let me promise you something. There's enough curveballs in this movie that'll keep you guessing to the very end, because uh, all of my predictions in the first like 20 minutes of this movie, completely wrong, and I'm okay with that. It's very unpredictable, and I love how they did subvert all of my expectations, but in a clever way. There's meta and campy dialogue everywhere in this script, and I'm okay with it because it was purposeful. I love the commentary on toxic fandom, reboots, sequels, and there's even a new term that Mindy uses in this film. Requel. I guess that's like a reboot and a sequel, but it just works. I mean, there's even an entire moment where Mindy explains what a requel is and how, well, let's just say toxic fandom can sometimes ruin things. So it's really cool to just see that these characters get it and that the script is smart and it's not necessarily just being meta to be meta. There's, like I said, a purpose behind it. And I also like how the script has our new generation of actors guessing which one of them is the killer. It just makes for some really funny moments. But speaking of the humor, guys, this is probably the funniest screen movie since the original. I was cackling in some moments because it was just so darn clever. It, it didn't need to be over the top bombastic humor. It just was subtle enough to work, but it also sometimes will hit you over the head in a funny way. So I really appreciated that blend of humor. And most of that humor, I'm not going to lie, does come from Jack Quaid. He has a lot of those lines. Richie's a funny character here, but most of them have those chops to deliver some punchlines that just made me crack up in the theater. But is there anything that doesn't work in Scream 5? Well, there's not a lot to say in the negative section, but what I will tell you is there's maybe one little knock against this film, and that's in some moments of melodrama, I wasn't entirely sold. And there are some scenes with Melissa Barrera's character, Sam, where to me, it just wasn't giving what it probably needed to give in that moment. And I was willing to overlook it because the scenes didn't last too long, but some of the lines of dialogue there didn't feel as natural, and maybe a little bit of the line delivery for me was rough around the edges but it wasn't enough to detract from the scene because I think that was more of a script issue maybe like a tiny issue versus the acting ability of Melissa Barrera because you look at in the heights and every moment of drama or melodrama worked for me and here it wasn't as efficient in some scenes but it was good enough to really carry the movie from one scene to the next i mean geez this movie honestly just breezed by so those moments again come and go but it was noticeable enough for me to make a little note but other than that minor knock you guys i can't tell you there's anything wrong with this film seriously this is one of my favorite horror movies i've seen in the past what maybe five years and it's effective for it being the fifth film in the franchise it should not work this well so overall you guys scream 5 is just an incredible film it's fun it pays homage to the past while still living in the present and setting up a stage for the future if they want to do more movies with this new generation i'm all the way in this cast is incredible it has so many rising stars and stars in their own right. I love Jenna Ortega's performance, like I said. I was a big fan of this new generation coming together and just providing some amazing moments of commentary and dialogue together. And the film itself honestly should not be this good. It's the fifth film in a slasher franchise. I mean, for as predictable as most of the third and fourth film were, I felt like Scream 5 was not predictable at all. And if you had to ask me where the heck does this rank in the franchise, hear me now. This is the best Scream movie since the original. Now, yes, I know some people will be like, well, Scream 2. I just never had the nostalgic appeal and draw to Scream 2, even though currently before this movie, it was at my number two. I'm sorry, make way for Scream 5. This film just gets it. It honors what Wes Craven was able to produce with the original films and the cast works. The direction is incredible. The writing is effective and all of the kill scenes were pretty darn gruesome. So Scream 5 is a strong four and a half out of five for me. It is just one of those movies that is so fun and I can't wait to rewatch it because I'm gonna pick up on some things I know I definitely missed in the midst of me squirming. Literally, there were some scenes where I like had to turn my eyes from the screen. It's rough. But again, you guys, it is well worth your time and money this weekend. If you can safely get to a theater, I think it would be even more fun with a crowd. And yes, man, this movie just delivers. So if you are worried about this film, 
I really hope this review made you less worried because Scream 5 just nails it. Guys, there you have it. That's my real review of Scream. And if you have seen the movie, let me know down below in the comments what you think, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, or if you're right there in the middle. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the big red button below for more reviews, reactions, and some news breakdowns just like this. Guys, it has been a blast talking about this film. And um, I almost wonder if Ghostface is just as happy. Hey, you want to stick around for my outro? That, that, there's a line I say at the end of all my reviews. Okay, cool. Alrighty, guys, again, thanks so much for watching. And I'll catch you at the next screening.